Whenever you are ready, sir, I'm ready for you. All of us have a fear, a worst fear. Mine is forgetting who I am, what I am, who I am, um, specifically through a disease called Alzheimer's. And this disease is truly terrifying. It affects a lot of people, and the older that you get, the more chance that you have of getting this disease. So it, it can affect anybody and everybody that's in this room. Um, genetically, if you have a close relative, you have a higher risk of it. If you have head trauma, you have a higher risk of it. First hand experience that I have with it is two grandparents. Um, took care of them, glad they got the disease. And I wanted to know why they weren't the same people as they laid in bed down. And so I did a bunch of research on it. And I found out these things that, you know, the head trauma, which I do have, um, and then the genetic factor, which I do have, leads to this high risk. So I wanted to know everything that I could about it. It's scary. So tonight I want to talk to you about what Alzheimer's is, um, how it affects the patients, and then how you can prevent getting it. So first off, we're going to talk about what Alzheimer's is. So the Mayo Clinic has an article online, uh, updated on December 8, 2018, that says, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive disorder that causes brain cells to waste away and to generate and die. It goes on to say that the exact causes of Alzheimer's disease aren't fully understood, but at its core are problems with brain proteins that fail to function normally, disrupt the work of brain cells, or neurons, and unleash a series of toxic events. Neurons are damaged, lose connections to each other, and eventually die. So what does this all mean? So in your brain, there are proteins, um, and they form a plaque around uh, your synapses. And what happens is that your neurons die, and your brain ends up looking like the one that's on the left-hand side of there, your right. Yes. <laughs> um, so healthy brain on the, on the left, Alzheimer's on the right. right. So a good analogy for this is that you your brain is like a computer. The pathways that are on there are your synapses. As soon as those synapses start to corrode or the pathways corrode, you can't access that information. And Alzheimer's gets even scarier here in a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Because now we're going to talk about how it affects the patient. So because Alzheimer's is a form of dementia, it's kind of like how a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. So if you're familiar with that at all, geometry. Um, they're similar, but they're not, because Alzheimer's has a specific condition that goes along with that plaque. Uh, what happens is, well, I'm going to let the Texas Health and Human Services, uh, which was updated on July 18, 2019, an article titled Alzheimer's Disease Questions and Answers. It says, the most common first sign of Alzheimer's disease is gradual loss of short-term memory. Other symptoms may include anxiety, suspiciousness, agitation, confusion, difficulties with activities of daily living such as feeding and bathing, difficulty with recognizing family and friends, forgetting how to use simple ordinary things such as a pencil, inability to recognize objects, loss of appetite, weight loss, loss of bladder and bowel control, problems finding or speaking the right word, loss of speech, repetitive speaking or action, sleep disturbances, total dependence on caregiver, and wandering and pacing. Right? Some of them um, kind of seem pretty innocuous. You don't really have a, a lot of us forgot what we were going to say. Some of us repeated what we wanted to say. Uh, nobody lost control of their bowels, hopefully. Uh, some of us repeated what we wanted to say or forgot what we wanted to say. They're, they're kind of like a 3,000 piece puzzle, but you're missing a piece, right, at the very beginning. It's really hard to see it, unless you know what you're looking for. But sometimes it gets better and easier to recognize. So it's like um, you go out to, you get to go to dinner with a friend, right? Uh, you uh, forget a dentist appointment. You all of a sudden now can't remember what your favorite meal is. 
you don't know your wife in 50 years, your husband in 50 years, you don't know your grandkids, your parents. And the scariest thing about this is it can start when you're 30. So it's truly terrifying. And you have 8 to 12 years to live with it. So now we're going to talk about preventing it since I've scared you guys <laughs> pretty gosh darn good. Um, and I say prevent because there is no cure. It's a degener degenerative disease. Um, there are medications that slow down the progress of the disease, but there's nothing that actually stops it. And they have medications that help with the anxiety or the weight loss or all of the symptoms, but no, no cure. So, I am over 30. I just want to warn you guys right now. So this might be a, a sign. <laughs> The different things that you can do in order to prevent this disease, though, other than medication, which only slows it, is um, exercise. Exercise is a great thing for your body. It's also a great thing for your mind. A healthy diet is another thing that they say, and this um, is more closely re related to a Mediterranean diet because it's high in uh, fats, known as omega-3s. Um, and all of this is backed up by facts and studies that have been going, going on over and over and over again. Because of the way that Alzheimer's works, and there's so many different variables between people and um, the genetics that go along with it, uh, these studies continuously throw back these results, which is pretty neat, I think. Um, the other thing that you can do according to Nature, Volume 559, Number 7715, uh, article entitled, a Quest to Stave Off the Inevitable, written by Emily Sam. A 2017 analysis by a group of European researchers that looked at data from more than 55,000 people found that the risk dropped for each completed year of formal education. You're not going for your doctorate, that's fine. There's another thing that the article says that you can do. It says later on, the possibility of building a cognitive reserve that protects against future decline might explain evidence to show that, even with limited schooling, a robust social, net social network and intellectual stimulation through puzzles and other means might help the brain stay healthy, and that social isolation can be damaging. So this just means that the more that you um, get out, the more that you exercise your brain, the more that you view your brain as a muscle and something that needs to be exercised, the more synapses that you have connecting your neurons easier it is for those connections to stay alive. Tonight, I shared with you my grades, which is to lose who I am and what I am through a disease that strips everything away from you and those around you. We looked at what Alzheimer's is, what it does to you, and then how you can prevent it. I want to thank you for your time.